Hello and welcome to To The Final Bell, the official Geelong Cats podcast. It's great to have you with us again for this week. We are brought to you once again by Panther Tires. We really appreciate Panther Tires' support. They're out at Lara. Go and check them out when you're allowed to, of course. But if you need anything with your car, new tires, whatever, go and check out the guys at Panther Tires. We love the fact that they allow us to talk complete nonsense every single week. And this week is going to be no different. We're going to be chatting with Shannon Burns, Premiership hero and one of the favourites of all of his teammates over the years. It'd be great to catch up with Shan. Young gun, Cam Tahini, pick 50 in last year's draft. We're yet to see him play in the blue and white hoops, but what I'm told is very, very good on the social media. So we'll chat to him about that. We'll get to your questions. We're going to talk all things footy. I am joined once again by Matthew Stokes and the newsbreaker, Scotty Gullen. Scotty, you're dropping bombs everywhere. Um, good morning, Cameron. Yeah, I was <laughs> unaware of this, but I'm, uh, you know what it's like on podcasts. You say things and you don't really remember doing it. Um, that might have happened, but that's good. That's a worry, isn't it, Stokesy, when he's <laughs> dr- dropping that the AFL is going to be starting July 10th, the whisper going around, and he doesn't even know he's done it. <laughs> That's a big concern, Scotty. Um, and where, where are you? Somewhere in the Bahamas or something? What are you, what are you, what are you just sitting I'm, back on the lounge? There's bloody freezing in Geelong and you're just... No, well, I'm, in, I'm in Bowen Head, Stokesy, where it's always sunny and beautiful. And yeah, I am on the banana lounge in the backyard with some plants that look very suspicious from what I can see. But anyway, uh, yeah, the mail is that uh, TV and radio stations were given a little bit of a heads up because obviously they have to get moving as quickly as everyone and July 10 was the date thrown out so back in training June 10 I think would be how it would work Does that sound achievable Stokesy from the AFL or just all of these players they're that keen to play that just give them a date and they'll just do it they'll play Yeah absolutely I think so I reckon they'll be ready and and busting to get back to the footy club to be honest like everyone else is so keen to get back to normal life so you know, the sooner we get back to, as long as it's safe and, um, you know, we do it the right way, I think there's no risk in, in trying to get back and, and get our players back out there and give us something to watch because I'm sick of watching Paw Patrol and, and um, <laughs> all these kid cartoons. So can we get some footy back, please? Well, one well, thing the, we... curve, the curve seems to be under control, Cameron. Like, in general, the public is starting to lessen restrictions. So another month, you can probably see... We're not going to have crowds, obviously. We can forget crowds, but... Are we forgetting uh, crowds for the entire season? Is that looking like... Finals in, what, November or December? Maybe, maybe. But I think... I don't think we're back... We're thinking crowds at all, which is very sad. But like Stokesy, we need something. It is very sad, and it will be, like round one was, very jarring in the first couple of games, saying, ah, this just isn't the same, this isn't right. But I think people will slowly get used to it, and it'll just become in the background, and they'll appreciate having footy back and something to watch, because we're so starved of live sport right now. Oh, no doubt. I think the players get used to it. Everyone will get used to it. I mean, I went to a game round one like you did, and it was surreal. It was very odd. But I think we'll all get the hang of it. It was like going to a country game. You could hear everything that was said. It was bizarre. But I think we're all just, we just want to see something. One thing to highlight, just how starved we are of live sport and our favourite sports are that pretty much all sports fans, whether you love basketball or not, tuned in to the Michael Jordan documentary, The Last Dance, as though it was a live (laughs) event that we're all watching and that pumped to talk about. It was great to watch, though. I, I remember growing up and I was footy and cricket, but when Michael Jordan was doing his thing at the Chicago Bulls, that was the only time basketball entered my world. And Michael Jordan was something, just a phenomenon. Uh, it was great to see a little bit of the background stuff and Scotty Pippen there with him. And I'm assuming, Stokes, you would have watched it. You, you love it. Uh, oh, I love it. What did you think of it? Oh, I just loved it. I was glued in and I'm so glad I didn't put the 10 episodes on back to back because I would have stayed up till four in the morning <laughs> watching it. So um, it was a bit hard to, to really focus on it because I didn't want to wait to, you know, the kids went to sleep to watch it because I, I, I was afraid I was going to miss out. So trying to watch it with the two kids um, and Amelia, uh, it was quite difficult, but I just loved to, to get his mindset on how he became as good as he was. And uh, you know, I was only just young when he was coming through, but watching all these replays, I've got all these DVDs, I've got all these shoes, um, 
uh, to have that kind of a um, a career and what he was able to do was bloody magnificent. To now watch it um, and to see how he re- um, interacted with everyone and how he went, it was uh, it was incredible watching. How good was that bit where he when he was coming back from the foot injury and he was on restricted time, seven minutes per <laughs> half, and there's still a chance to make playoffs, and he's told. No, you can't play any more in this game, even though I think scores were level. How angry he was! At, no, it's not about next year. It's not about every single game we're here to win. I loved his mindset, and he just refused to be beaten. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, when you think about um, you look, you look at the way that he approached his his basketball, and there's a reason why he was a, he's the goat. Um, but then you kind of look back and you think about some of the players that we play with, Cameron, and and people with that mindset. And there's probably two people, three people in my mind that come with that kind of mindset, win at all costs um, and do whatever it takes for the win. And that would be uh, Joel Selwood. Yes. Joel Corey. <laughs> yes. And Matty Scarlett would be the three guys that I think would just have that approach where they just would do anything. And, and um, we're good on bad. You, you, you're just going to jump on the bandwagon and, we're gonna, and I'm going to get you guys and we're going to win. How good were the relationships he had with like the general manager? Oh, that was fascinating. <laughs> they just were hanging it. Yeah, he's a little midget. And they were just hanging it on him. Oh, we'll lower the ring for you, Krause. You know. But it ended up being such, like a toxic background. But it's fascinating how they all did it together. Well, Jerry Krause was the man, he, along with others, credited with oh, putting the group the team, together. Yeah. But really is portrayed as the villain in oh, this big time. series. And... It's amazing they could still perform at such an incredibly high level with everything that was swirling on. It goes to showing you know, the old thing with footy clubs, if we bring it back to AFL, you don't have to be best mates with everyone. It doesn't have to be all perfect. There can be a little bit of chaos going on, but as long as you're all there with a the mindset of when we're working together, we're going to get the job done together and we're going to be absolute professionals and great teammates together, um, you can still go on and have great success. It was good to hear what he said about Pippen, you know, when, when he was reflecting back and said, he's my best teammate. Because, you know, we've heard they don't get on, and I think we'll see a bit of that in the next few episodes. But he, he clearly understood how important Pippen was to his own, you know, what he achieved. I think he's quite when he says, no one should mention Michael Jordan without mentioning yeah. Scotty Pippen. I think that was a clear statement in the sense of how important he was to Jordan and his brand and, and the Honestly, they were able to create. What about the backdrop? <laughs> where, where he's on the chair, you know, when it, with the ocean in the background. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and the, the cognac. <laughs> yeah, and the cigar. Like, that's yeah. just perfect. He's doing okay, isn't he? I think he's, he's getting by in life. I don't reckon this whole uh, economic situation right now no. be worrying him too much. Um, speaking of great partnerships and great dynasties, you guys, just before we've come on air, have just dropped a little bomb on me. I love my New England Patriots. And oh. we know that Tom Brady's left and gone to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The great Rob Gronkowski, the tight end, his partner in crime, who Brady looked for so many times in those big moments, retired, had a year off, and has now been brought back and been traded to the Buccaneers. Little tears started rolling down my cheek when I saw the Gronk. He's going to be is... wearing a different jersey. I don't like this, Scotland. No, I'm a Patriots man too. This is shattering. I mean, it's the dynasty's just been blown up. I mean, I know Gronk wasn't playing, but he was still part of us forever. Correct. He was going well, to Florida. Maybe Bill Belichick should smile every now and again, and maybe his players would want to come back. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't you, know. Want, you want to start going Belichick there, Stacey? <laughs> oh, I'm... he's, he's a, a great star. man. Now, Tampa Bay, baby. Tampa Bay. Now, Stokesy, I want to compare. We've gone Chicago Bulls, their incredible dynasty. We've mentioned the New England Patriots. Is it okay if we put our team in amongst that uh, group? Because (laughs) this round would have been round six. And as we've liked to do on this podcast, we want to have just a quick look back at what's happened in round five, round four, round three, but round six. And what other game could we go to than round six, 2007? Coming off a loss to North Melbourne at Cadinia Park, and not a great, not a great game. Didn't play great football. We were two and three at that stage. Turn up to play against Richmond at what was it called then? Telstra Dome. It wasn't Eddie Had Stadium. I reckon it was called. And a big double page article by 
Scotty's great mate at the Herald Sun, Johnny <laughs> Ralph. Uh, suggesting yes. the cats were no good. And then this scoreline happened, Stokesy. 35 goals, 12, 222 to 9, 11, 65. A 157 point victory to the cats. Gary Ablett Jr., 32 touches and three goals. Nath Ablett, four goals. Stevie J in his comeback game, 21 touches, two goals. Four goals to Mackey, four goals to Chapman, three goals to Varco, three goals to yours truly. Yeah, I've done, that. <laughs> I've done a bit of research and saw your name there, Cameron. Uh, but don't forget, you did have crisis meetings in the week leading up, boys. Oh, like, you were at serious crossroads, weren't you? Is this, is this, is this, is this more of your... Uh, Breaking the news with no substance again, Scott. No, I, I've written books about these meetings. We all know that. Was a, but it yeah, clicked. I, what clicked that day, gentlemen? Because I, I got dropped. That's why. So. Oh, really? <laughs> you didn't I didn't play. even realise that. Yeah, oh, Cameron, what have you done? Oh, no. Matthew, no. I'm sorry. Oh, well, you know, someone had to um, <laughs> pull on a sword uh, after the North Melbourne game. And, you know, Bomber wanted to take his anger out on a... I don't know, I think I played eight games at that stage, so I got dropped for this week. Um, oh, and then no. they go and uh, have the game that, that we did. So let's talk about another game. Come on. <laughs> oh, no. The whole segment was geared around Stokesy's recollection of that game, Cameron. Well, because oh, there is play. some. What was your What was your little uh, your your website piece you used to do? Was it Stokesy's Corner or something like uh, that? Get Stoked, yeah. Get Stoked. <laughs> you confronted John Ralph about that article, and. Yep. Uh, let him have it. Well, there was a lot of crosses and a lot of question marks on a lot of our players. Oh, I think Gary, yeah. Gary and Bo- Barry, uh, Boris was one of them as well. I mean, um, Johnson, John- Kelly, Johnson. myself, yeah, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Still question marks on you. Anyway, yeah, but um, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, it was an amazing article. And, 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 and looking back, I mean, I don't think any of us were driven by what uh, the media people or you know, journalists have to say. But uh, I definitely, it was brought up a few times to make me think that it did. Um, Piss a lot of people off. So, <laughs> was that the heading, Scotty? Was yeah, well, I think it was double standards and inflated egos. Yeah, the crosses and the ticks were a issue, and <laughs> <laughs> the great Kevin Dickerson, who's one of the great haters of all time, he put it up <laughs> in the media room and it sat in there for years, so everyone would see it when they come in to cover a game <laughs> at Kidinia Park. Oh wow, you couldn't be more off. And you then won nine out of the next twenty games and won the grand final by a world record amount. Well, I have a one. I have a do. I do have a good story about that night. I um, I obviously went up as an emergency and uh, watched the <laughs> watched the onslaught happen. But I went to um, I was in a drive-through at High Street here um, at KFC um, to drown my sorrows. <laughs> and Chap, I think Chappie just done his hammy um, in that game, and I was behind him in the KFC drive-through. <laughs> and um, I he done his hammy, and he's like, "Oh, you'll be right to play next week." So I do have some kind of um. Um, good fortunes come out of that because after that, Chappie was out for, I think it was a couple of weeks and I uh, was able to come in and be able to cement my spot um, for the rest of the year. So um, thanks for Chappie for doing his hammy and, um, and seeing him at KFC it made me sleep a little bit better that night. So Cameron, I'll ask you what it was like on that ground that day. I mean, that was Nirvana. Everything just clicked because you were trying to play this attacking style and it just hadn't worked to that point. Yeah, it, it was interesting though. We... One of the things that did come out during that week was we realised crisis that meetings, yeah, not not crisis <laughs> meetings, but we realised that this attacking football that we were wanting to play, which was just see an open option and give it hand or foot, just you know move it quick when the opportunity presents, give our forwards a good chance, the basic sort of stuff, was only good though when we won the contest and when we really defended well and we took the ball off the opposition early and then we could attack better rather than just playing a complete shootout because a shootout was they move it from one end of the ground to the other. We hopefully win it back and then we try and move it the length of the ground. That wasn't working. So one of the things that came out was if we're really good in the contest, if we defend really well and our pressure is enormous and, you know, that starts, um, I know Stokesy said he didn't play in that game, but throughout the rest of the year, started in the forward line with blokes like Stokesy and Shan and, and these guys. When we did that well, gee, we could attack well. We, we, we had the ball, first of all, because you've won it in a contest, or we got it back in a hurry, and then we could attack again. So that was, all, that was our focus going to that game, contest and defend well. 
And from that, we just realized, oh, wow, we can, we can play. <laughs> and, and as the game got rolling, it was, this ball is just, we, we'd win it and, or they'd get it and we'd get it straight back off them and it'd just go ping, ping, ping and goal. Yeah. Like, oh, right. Okay. This, this kind of works. And it was a little bit of a, just, just made us have more belief that, okay, everything we've been doing is right. We just got to do some of those basic areas better and then we're, bloody good at what we do it was i was there it was like globetrotter stuff it was <laughs> of insane course, of course stevie coming back from his first game yeah. back from his big suspension thought it was all him yeah, yes yes he, he claimed that <laughs> god love him it was uh it was a remarkable one and then i i don't think though that that night or that game sorry gave us total belief it was something that so, okay, this could work. But then the coming weeks, I reckon Stokesy, I should have checked this. I reckon we beat the Adelaide Crows a few weeks later in Adelaide. Adelaide, yep. In a, maybe by only 17 or 20 points, it wasn't anything remarkable. But Adelaide had smashed us in 06 and 05 in Adelaide. And I reckon that was the first time I realised, oh, yeah, we're a pretty good team here. We, could, yep. we can really start doing something if we lock onto it. I can't, I can't keep concentrating with this bloke over here, Scott Gullen. <laughs> what are you doing over there? Well, um, I have to hold the phone. It gets a bit uncomfortable, Stokesy. I apologise. <laughs> I was just worried that you didn't play in that Adelaide game then. I was cringing. <laughs> you, did, you, you did play in that Adelaide game, didn't you? <laughs> I, played, I played. I think I kicked three against Adelaide. So, yeah, yeah, there it is. Pipe down, there Scotty. It nice. Sorry. Well, it was uh, a remarkable I'm always moment. well-researched. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a break soon As I mentioned, Cam Tahini Pick 50 in last year's draft And TikTok star I had to work out what TikTok was for this uh, Coming up soon And Shannon Burns, the great Shannon Burns Is going to join us a little bit later on But before we do take a break Let's just power through a few of our listener questions uh, I've got a couple of beauties here for you, Stokesy Thank you um, Appreciate everyone who is sending our questions in This one, Maddie. Why do they call you Big Sexy? That's from one of our <laughs> listeners, Asava. <laughs> well, <laughs> As- Asava's obviously got too much uh, time on his hands. But um, the big Raider Galea, um, I-, I call him the, f- the sexy Fijian. Um, and um, obviously, he's, uh, he's pretty big. But um, uh, I call- so I call him the little sexy, and he calls me Big Sexy. So we've got a pretty good relationship, me and Asava. Um, I actually did a bit of work with him in the academies uh, before he got drafted. So I've known him for a few years now, but um, yeah, got a pretty good relationship with uh, the, the little sexy over there. So um, <laughs> shout out to Asava listening. Thanks for listening, Mark. Keep them coming in, Sav. That's gold. Uh, another one from one of our uh, listeners here, Scotty, um, for Stokesy. How big is Maddie <laughs> Stokes's head compared to his body from Nathan Kruger? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sonia, Sonia, my head, we actually, um, we, uh, remember we used to actually measure our heads at the club? Thingy? Yes, you and I uh, used to check all the time. And um, it was, um, yeah, obviously being a really short man, I remember uh, we got the tape measure out on a mad Monday, because uh, me and Otto were obviously arguing who's got a bigger head. Um, and then we got Barmy, and Barmy's head was 65 <laughs> yes. centimetres around, which um, is quite a fairly big head. Um, Otto's was 61, but I think mine was like 60 and a half. So for a small man, I've got a really big head. So Sonia, thanks for pointing that out. Um, uh, I appreciate, appreciate the love from the players. Head to body ratio. You've got Otto covered by a long way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I know. Unfortunately, I think that's, uh, if you see my grandfather's uh, uh, head, um, I've been hit with that uh, unlucky straw. So. <laughs> what about your children, Stokes? Is it continuing? Oh, nah. No, no. Wilbur, Wilbur, Wilbur's got a very big head. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the, Amelia loves me for that. So, um, <laughs> nah, it's been passed down, mate. It's been passed down. Good, good, uh, good. Brilliant. Thank you to Nathan and to Asava there, our loyal listeners. This one's from Tomo. Stokesy, might be difficult to answer so, uh, during the footy season. You might have to go to post-season. Who was the best roommate to stay with? Because um, interstate trips, footy... Did you room by yourself? Yeah, I room by myself. I, I got put with I got put with Mark Blake, my first one. 
um, and he snored the whole time. So um, Blakey was a really bad, uh, bad uh, roommate, to be honest. So that was the only one I ever had. But um, yeah, Bernsey's coming up. Me and Bernsey travelled the world together, uh, and he was a very good, uh, very good roommate. Very clean, very uh, respectful, but um, he, he liked having a beer, which was always suited my style. What about you, Cameron? The one I was similar was by myself, interstate games. I, early days, got Paul Chambers. Remember Big Sarge? Oh, yeah. He was a snorer as well. He could wake up people three three rooms down. <laughs> uh, so that's when I went in and said, no more. We've got we to be by ourselves. Uh, I had to room with our great mate, Stokesy, uh, Stevie J, on a footy yeah. trip. Oh, and no. We had to catch a flight home from Hong Kong. Hong Kong, is that when you carried him out? <laughs> I had to carry him because I couldn't wake him up. I had to... <laughs> Now, you had to put his suit on. You had to I'm, put his... I'm close with my teammates. We are great friends. But I bonded with Stevie that morning more than I should have ever had to. I had to dress him, <coughs> grab his passport, <coughs> pack, pack, his, um, pack his bag for him and then carry him down to the bus just because he was a little sleepy, no other reason. And um, I had to get him on a flight because I was so scared of getting home to Australia and seeing Aaron, his wife, and explaining <laughs> that I left him behind. Did, and is it true, Cameron, because I might have been in the room when you were trying to wake him up, that it wasn't just a couple of friendly little pushes or um, a shake. It was a couple of... Um, couple I, of... I practically punched him as hard as I possibly <laughs> could. I, head, body, everything. I went for kidneys, whatever, just trying to wake him. He no did response. not budge. Zero. What a star. Uh, never, ever room with that man again. Um, last one, and this is a serious one to finish on before we take a break. Oh, well, <laughs> sort of serious one. Uh, Julia here would like a couple of tips from you, Stokesy. Uh, hey, Stokesy, I'm a smaller player my, uh, myself, just like you. Any tips for on the field when you're coming up against bigger opponents? Oh, yes. Always be uh, try and be smarter than most of tall people and, and bigger people I find are quite dumb. Um, <laughs> no, nah, it's all about body positioning and being smarter than your opponent. I feel. I, I mean, I was never quick, and I was never um, uh, the biggest person, but I was. A, I always try to be outsmart my opponent. So, um, if you can be, get the best body position as soon as you can, and outwork and outsmart your opponents, you're going to be better off. So, um, I I learned that pretty quickly when I got to John that. Uh, I needed to be fitter and be able to outwork my opponent. So I got myself extremely fit um, to be able to do that. So And around the your, contest, Stokesy, were you always on the move? So that always they could on never the move, get yeah. that push off you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you know when you were tagging the likes of Daniel Kerr and Brent Harvey, if you can, as a smaller bloke, if you can get some separation, um, good luck trying to catch us. So um, if you can get some separation from your opponent and be able to, to get a bit of distance between you and your, your opponent, you'll be, uh, you'll be better off. Beautiful. Thank you for that question, Julia. Thank you to all of our listeners, especially uh, Nathan Kruger and Big Sav. <laughs> Keep yeah. that gold coming in. We're going to take a break. Cam Tahini is coming up next. We're going to talk TikTok with him, a sentence I thought I would never, ever utter in my entire life. Shannon Burns later on in the podcast. Uh, big thanks again to Panther Tyus, who's bringing this all to you. Let's take a break. Welcome back. You are with us on to the final bell. Brought to you by Panther Tyres. We appreciate their support. Stokesy's uh, just done... What, is that a little bit of fathering there, Stokesy? Just said, stay and yep. naughty? Naughty. Yep. He understands <laughs> naughty. <laughs> Nailed it beautifully. Uh, we're with Stokesy, as I just mentioned, and Scotty Gallen, and we are now joined by Cam Tahini. Cam, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. Now, I've got to apologise right off the top. It is Tahini, isn't it? Yeah, Tahini. When when we did the draft podcast last year, I think I went with, what did I go with? Tani, maybe? Tani, yeah, yeah, that was going around for a little bit. Um, <laughs> oh, one, I, yeah. I am I'm like, very, I'm very sorry about that. Tahini nah, is. Nah, no trouble. Not like your research to be wrong, Cameron. Oh, it is guaranteed nah. to be wrong, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> Every Scotty, time. Scotty, leave it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> oh, I'm Cameron, you know that, Matthew. <laughs> well, Cam, picked up. Draft pick number 50 last year. Norwood played four. Yeah. Now, can you tell us, draft year, uh, from, from the people I've been talking to, uh, a lot of excitement around you and then maybe some injuries just slid it back a little bit. Where you're going to go, I suppose, 
no one really knew. Um, what was your feel coming into draft day? Did you did you know for certain you were going to get picked up? Uh, and did you have a feel for around where in the draft? Um, well, I guess you're never certain. There's always that anxiety on whether you will be picked or not. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. Um, I guess it was a pretty up and down year. Gets started pretty strong. Was able to string a couple of league games together for Nord, which was probably a highlight of the year. And then, like you touched on there, a few injuries um, that probably hampered um, how many games I played and able to showcase myself. So, um, yeah, I was pretty nervous still coming to draft night. I didn't have too much clue on where I'd end up. Um, sort of just happy to go anywhere. And, um, yeah, I was lucky enough to be picked up by Geelong. Well, what was it like? You had to go into the second night, didn't you, Cam? That would have been a bit scary. Yeah, two, it was a two-night draft. Yeah, I sort of saw... Uh, I think there was three SA boys going the first night and my best mate from Nord, Jill Stevens, went as well. So I guess you're pretty happy for them in the moment and then you sort of quickly switch to, oh, there's another night to go. Um, am I going to get picked up or what's going to happen sort of thing? So yeah, it was a pretty sleepless night um, leading into it. But um, yeah, sort of nerves didn't really kick in the next day until the draft started up again. So, yeah, Had you had much pretty... contact with Wellesie? I mean, he likes to tell people... <clears throat> not to talk, you know, keep your head down, don't tell anyone we're interested. Had you had um, much contact with Wellesie? It's actually quite funny. I didn't, didn't actually meet Wellesie until I got to the club. So I think I was... Meant, <laughs> Good I was meant research catch, from our man. Yeah, I was meant to catch up with him um, at the Combine and Tim Kelly requested his trade about 20 minutes before my interview. So yeah, it was all action stations for Geelong, I think, at that point. So everyone should sort of shut off and yeah, it was just... Myself, Troy, and Liam in the meeting. So it was a pretty chilled chat at the combine, really. But um, Scotty, is that is that called plausible deniability for Wellesy? If <laughs> if if Cam and I'm not saying you will turns out to be not much good, uh, Wellesy will say, "Well, I never met with him, but if he turns out to have an incredible career, yeah. which I know he will, uh, Wellesy will say, I knew he was that good a player. I never had to meet with him. I just let my underlings do it." Yeah, oh, no doubt. It's set up perfectly. <laughs> Booming left foot, I'm told, Cam. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, I'm not too sure who told you that, but oh, they might know a thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cam, if you didn't meet Stephen Wells, when did you meet Matthew Stokes, the man who would shape your career from this point on? <laughs> um, I reckon it was my first day at the club. Yeah, we he sort of took us through... Uh, well, I probably met him when we were getting introduced to all the staff and then he gave us a bit of a tour through the upstairs, told us that he sits in the pretty much the boardroom, does all his work there. <laughs> so pretty much whenever someone needs something upstairs, they'll go to him and he'll just tell them to do his jobs, etc. So, <laughs> <laughs> so can, you can tell us what Stokesy does then. This is good. What do you do, Stokesy? Just remind our listeners. Oh, Cam's doing such a great job. Why don't you continue, Cam? <laughs> He reckons he's going for Cookie's job in a few years' time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right, you want to start this, right? Let's, let's go on to it. Let's see about your TikTok, Cameron. If, uh, do you, you like have, if, you, I, I actually quite do like him. Um, I don't have TikTok, but I made Amelia download the app so I can look, keep an eye on what, you, uh, up, what you're up to because I like Cameron yeah, yeah. Ling and probably... Scotty, you wouldn't have any idea what TikTok No, is. mate, never heard of it. You no, probably no. wouldn't even be able to spell TikTok. But, Cam... Tell us about See? your <laughs> Tell us about your TikTok and, and killing some time and you know Hawkey's giving you a big pump up and a few of the other boys I've spoken to. So give us a bit of a rundown on what you're doing and uh, what 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 inspires you with your little dance moves? Um, well, once I got back into SA, I sort of just did the right thing and stayed at home for the fourteen days. Um, sort of got five days in and I'm like losing my mind sort of thing, didn't know what to do with myself and <laughs> We sort of had a crack at TikTok in the boarding house last year and I was like, oh, you know what, might as well get into it again. And um, just did a dance and one of the, I think France Sevens must have got a hold of it and got into the group chat pretty quickly with all the boys and sort of became a thing, Tahini's quarantine TikTok <laughs> one a day sort of thing. I, so. I, I don't. I don't have TikTok, but we got sent a link. So I was able to watch a couple and very good, very good, a very creative. I did notice you responded to Jordan Clark's uh, sledge saying you bowl a little bit, but you really couldn't bat too much by actually showing him you could hit a few fours. 
My issue is that every one of those balls was a full toss and pretty simple to put away. So do you actually bat, you, you, you back yourself in as a great batsman? Is that that's what I'm asking? No, nah, I think Clarkie has been pretty generous by saying I could bowl a bit. <laughs> I think my role in cricket was pretty much stand at gully and give a bit of lip to the batsman, build a bit of pressure through sledging. So <laughs> handy in the field and that's about it. Oh, these young kids these days. How, how do you do TikTok? What do you, you do a dance and then you just... What do you do? Oh, oh, it's pretty much anything, really. You can do a dance. Um, you can, I think, lip sync Carl Barron jokes. Um, like... <laughs> <laughs> like you saw, hit back at Clarkie by showing him how good I am of a batter and stuff like that. Oh, it's pretty much as creative as your mind is, you can pretty much make anything really. So, yeah, what's your best? What's your best thing in quarantine? Um, oh, I think the boys enjoyed a dance. The first one I did um, to the song "Blinding Lights" by the weekend. Um, yeah, it's not too hard of a dance, but I think everyone just sort of was taken aback a bit like, well, what's going on to him? Like, where'd that come from? So, A few of the people, a few of the players have been quick to throw you to the wolves about uh, the TikTok. Who you got to uh, throw under the bus? Because that's what we do in this, in this podcast. We just throw people under the bus. Well, I don't think many of the boys really get into the TikTok. So the only other one I know is Gary Rowan. He's actually quite good at it. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not aware of many other Geelong boys really getting into the TikTok craze. So I'm probably the worst one second to Gary Rowan at the moment. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll keep ticking along, try to find that TikTok fame. But. Are, you, are you back, still back in South Australia at the moment, Adelaide? Uh, back in Cleve on the Cleve. EP. Okay, yeah. great. Um, and then back to Geelong when? Um, well, I guess when, once we find out when the season's kicking off again and when we start training, as soon as we find out those dates, pretty much be straight back then and get into it again, which, um, yeah, really looking forward to. Sort of, um, You don't realise how tough it probably is to just train on your own sort of thing. So sort of missing being out on the track with all the boys and yeah, really looking forward to getting back into the swing of it. And when you come back, you're with first year players still with host families? Yeah, with a host here at the moment, so back with her and um, yeah, she's looked after me very well um, to start with. So um, yeah, oh, nothing against mum's cooking, but um, <laughs> oh, no. No. Oh, oh, don't go there, don't go there. No, no. <laughs> I, think, I think I get fed exceptionally well here, which is probably not too great for the skinnies, much like Clarky. so. <laughs> <laughs> what are your skinnies at the moment, you reckon? Oh, I don't reckon they would have gone up or down too much, but Probably would have hoped for them to go down a little bit more than what they are, but nah, I've been keeping on top of them pretty well. Who's higher, you or Clarky? Oh, Clarky was pretty easily, but I think he's catching me, so it uh, might be a bit of a battle when we get back. <laughs> Could be doing the heat room with you, Stokesy. Is that is that what you do? Is that do you, do you just inflict pain on the young players? Me? Yeah, what, yeah. How do I do that? That's I, I don't do anything to do with working. Don't you do? Don't you do the heat room and the Go do extra sessions with the boys? Yeah, I do. I do with the rehab guys. And um, if anyone has uh, a cross-training session, I jump in and, and do it. Um, I do it for my own accord because I eat a lot of treats and a lot of chocolate. So um, <laughs> I need to burn off so I'm not uh, a fat mess like Jordan Clark was when he first got to the club. So, <laughs> so don't be like him, Cam. Don't be like him. Cam, we're very supportive no, on this podcast, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's, have you, I know this is the most crazy, ridiculous scenario you could have ever walked into with the season being put on pause. Have you had a chance to sit down and think about any goals? Have you set yourself, I want to play one game, I want to play 10 games, I want to play 22 and win the Norm Smith? Like what, what's, uh, have, you, have you had a chance to even look at what the season might be for you? Yeah, well, I guess it is yeah, very unclear at the moment still. Um, I guess the goals are still the same as when um, we left before the break. Still just continue to grow as a player, um, work on myself like physically, get stronger, keep working on skills as best as I can um, and just yeah, push hard um, to still try play that first match. Um, who knows what the goal is with the season if we end up playing games on shorter turnarounds and the opportunities might open up. 
um, better than what they probably would have initially. So I guess for most of us young ones, it is yeah a pretty good opportunity now of the season to sort of put ourselves out there and really push hard to break into the team. What surprised you or who surprised you the most, you know, when you got to an AFL club in Geelong? What was it that sort of took you by surprise? Um, oh, I guess just how um, the training standard always goes up. I guess each level you go up and um, I was lucky enough to do a senior pre-season with Nord, but even then just to step up again to AFL level was massive and just how professional everyone is. Um, I guess, um, obviously, the facilities we get at Geelong are probably a bit better than at lower levels, but just everyone always making sure they're doing what they need to and a little bit more. Um, that's probably something that I've got a bit better at, just getting in those extras, um, getting through the water as much as I can to help my body recover. Um, yeah, and just making the most of the facilities and resources we've got to better myself. Well, we certainly hope uh, we get to watch you play some AFL football this season. We want some footy, any footy to watch, but we certainly want to watch the young players go at it as well. So good luck for your first season, whenever that may be. And thank you so much for joining us and keep up the good work on TikTok, I suppose. I, I won't be following it, but I will be hearing from the guys and uh, looking forward to some more gold from you. Fingers crossed next time you see one, it will be TikTok famous. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't, wait. can't wait to see that booming left foot in action, Cam, but uh, all the best. Thanks for your time. Crazy. Thanks for having me. Great to have a chat with Cam Tahini there. Pick 50 at last year's draft, so keep an eye out for him. We're going to take another break. Shannon Burns, Premiership Hero of the Cats, is going to join us next. Welcome back. You are listening to To The Final Bell, brought to you by Panther Tyres. Go down and see the guys at Panther Tyres. In Lara, if you need anything to do with your car, certainly tyres. They're a terrific company and a great support of this podcast. As promised, and Stokesy's favourite, Stokesy's demanded this. Zach Tui got pushed aside, Scotty. Got told, uh, you're no longer required. Uh, Matty Stokes has got this covered. He wants to be on here permanently. Then started throwing his weight around saying, I need to pick the guests. And the number one guest I have on my list is the great Shannon Burns. Burns, uh, great to have you. It's great to be here, Lingy. And that's just respect, for the small man respect that uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll never understand, mate. Um, it was, uh, we had quite, quite pressure we used to create Stokes here. It was a brotherhood, wasn't it, mate? And um, it sticks strong, even tr- uh, sticks true, I should say, even after footy's finished. Someone had to create the, uh, the opportunities for Stevie and Chappie and, and exactly. Moons and Gaz. And we're the ones that are just down in the, in the bloody dirt, getting ready, getting dirty. <laughs> this guy, this guy gets That's it. it. You, he gets it. you the man. You're my boy. <laughs> and he's you been mean. pumping you up too, Bernsey, that you were a great roommate on overseas and interstate trips. Uh, your memories of Stokesy on those trips, was he as good a roommate as what um, he thought you were? Um, oh, he's pretty quiet. He'd just yeah, he'd get home and always want to be in bed before seven, <laughs> a cup of tea, just put things easy. Um, no, he was uh, he was very good. Um, yeah, they, they, were, they were good memories, the footy trips. So we, I don't think we missed one. Well, I certainly didn't miss one over my time at the, at the club. And I even uh, managed to tack onto a few when I went to the D's. <laughs> I was a, I'm a play welfare officer at the D's and I became the chaperone at their footy trips as well. So I managed to eat uh, another two or three even after I'd retired. <laughs> Shagger, give us your best couple of moments on the Geelong ones. Name names. Uh, best couple of moments. Uh, always the happy hour in the, in the pool, I think, uh, at the start of uh, uh, each night. Um, Thailand... Uh, really springs to mind, Cameron, and... Um, <laughs> oh, I'm going to say don't mention names, please. <laughs> oh, I'm all about names. We're a podcast of record. Um, no, I did have, we did have one moment on a footy trip um, with a few Geelong boys. Uh, we were uh, having dinner um, in, in Thailand at the time and um, just a bit of banter going from uh, table to table with a few Pommy boys. Um, and uh, we thought it was all in good fun. They were... You know, getting into us about how bad we were at particular sports and same for us to them and um, came up about Shane Warne somehow and um, one of the Pommy guys suggested he'd show me how Shane Warne bowls and 
picked up um, a hot potato off, uh, off the table and went to bowl it and threw it in my face as hard as he could. <laughs> oh! Uh, and so, so we got a we got scolding a, hot too. Scolding hot hot potato straight straight in the face. And it was, it was just about to be on. Cam Mooney just got up and said, boys, just sit down. Just sit down. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. The, the great mediator, Cam Mooney. The great Who mediator. Who would have thought? <laughs> and uh, anyway, we all returned to normal. Um, so, uh, one of the Pommy boys decided at best to throw a table across the, uh, a chair across the table, I should say. And, um, and then enter, uh, I know we all know Cam Mooney as a, as a lover off the field, but <laughs> the, the white line fever stepped in and... Those Tommy boys certainly regretted ever, ever <laughs> taking one. How many weeks? How many weeks would he have got suspension uh, if, he, I if he, it... I reckon he would have got the season. Let's <laughs> <laughs> um... Hi. Oh. I Burns, I just want to talk to you real quickly about you and being able to just sort of being able to snibble your way into any situation. Let's talk about New York when we're with um, I think we we're with Boris and, and Scarlo and Podsy and. Um, Talking about uh, your first um, first cigarette you ever had, and who was it with? <laughs> I've never I've never had a cigarette. Uh, no. Um, no, the only person I make an exception for was uh, Mickey Rourke. Uh, he, he happened to be in, in, in the bar at the time. I, I uh, yeah, I'm certainly I'm not a smoker by any stretch, um, but uh, yeah, it was obviously offered one by. By the great Mickey, and um, yeah, of course I smoke. Of course. I smoke. <laughs> How was the conversation? It would have been pretty short, wouldn't it, with Mickey? Um, yeah, it was. It was relatively short, but <laughs> we obviously struck up. Um, I don't know, some kind of long-term friendship because <laughs> we, we came back the next night, and um, Scarlo was pretty excited to see Mickey, and so was Boris and a few of the other boys, and. Um, he basically pushed past them and you know, and pulled me, pulled me aside, and I, I, like I was his best mate. I remember you, man, and got the arm around, and um, yeah, for a moment there, I felt like a, for a minor celebrity, and um, yeah, made the most of it. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, we should have had Bernsey on years ago, just oh, yeah. dropping gold left, right, and centre. I've been telling you this the whole time, you two. <laughs> None of this ridiculous, serious footy talk. No. Uh, Shan telling footy trip stories. No, I'm not about that, Cameron. I'm not about that. <laughs> uh, tell our listeners, they, uh, they do love you, Bernsey. Um, what have you been doing since your retirement? You mentioned you are player welfare at the Demons and doing a great job there. How many premierships have you managed to tack onto your resume since you've retired with the Cats? Um, yeah, I've managed to get another four under the belt, <laughs> which is, uh, um, yeah, which I'm pretty, pretty fortunate. And I've, I've been able to play with um, some, of my, some of my good mates that I'd always, um, you know, you make that promise to each other that you'll play once, once all's said and done. So, um, yeah, I've gone out to Deer Park, which... I'm not from Deer Park, but it, I, I know a few guys that, that play out there and I know the, the senior coach there really well. Um, and, yeah, they've, they've won seven in a row and, yeah, I've, I've been in the last four of those. And, so. and the last one, yes. I believe, uh, was a bit of a thriller. It was a classic. Yeah. And, uh, listen, I'm not, I don't want to lead you into a story, but I'm <laughs> led to believe that perhaps you played a, uh, a pretty large role in an amazing finish. Um, no, look, I just played, played my role, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> what gonna, have you done? The winning goal. I'm not going to let you set me up for that one. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a pretty satisfying win. We, we'd been beaten by that, that team three times during the year. Um, and five goals down at half time. Had two players sent off in the third quarter. So it was 16 v 18 in the third. Um, ended up being five goals down at three quarter time. And kicking into, I would say, a, a three or four goal breeze. I'm, I'm probably putting a little bit of mail on this. But, <laughs> and, um, and, yeah, managed to claw our way back. And we got up by three points. Um, so Now, who yeah. kicked the last couple? Uh, look, oh. I, I, again, I played my part. Um, <laughs> so you, want, you say you won. You won. It. You won it. <laughs> got the job done. Hey, uh, Bernsey, the one thing I, I'd like you to tell... Um, 
the listeners out there, and we do have a lot of them, um, is the story about the time when you got dropped on the Monday. Yeah. Um, I thought this might come up. Um, it's, it's, it's legendary at our club. Um, yeah. And um, the person who dropped you happened to have a bit of a wrestle with you. Can you just run through yeah. the week of that and how it all came about to you and Bomber wrestling in the middle yeah. of uh, GNHBA Stadium? Sure, sure. Yeah, so I've been dropped a few, <laughs> few times in my career. Um, <laughs> All, all different ways. Found out in the footy show, radio, the old man's giving me a call. Like, <laughs> I've had it all. I've had it all. But um, on this particular stage, and it, it never happens this early in the week, mind you. Like, this is, this is a Monday morning. You're normally coming in thinking, I'm going to get a bad edit here or something. Like, you know that you haven't played great. And I can see my edit up on the, up on the screen as soon as I walk in. <laughs> like, not going to go well for me here anyway. Uh, and Bomber opens the meeting with Shannon. He always Shannon. Um, not playing this week, Shannon. Not playing this week. So I've been <laughs> first sentence of the week. I've been dropped. <laughs> That's a bad start of the week, I tell you. And, uh, and, and this is why. And he he showed showed the edit, replayed the edit probably three or four times, slow mo. Didn't go hard enough. <laughs> I was well aware of it, and um, <laughs> anyway, so we go out, go out in the track. We train up, which obviously training um, goes after the, the team meeting, and uh, bombers into me the whole 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 session. Just any, anything that came up, just all over me. Anyway, the ball rolls in his direction. I run past the ball, straight past the ball, <laughs> <laughs> and try and take him out with the hip and shoulder. I just. I, I've had enough. I've, <laughs> I've snapped. And um, he, he, he sort of shrugs it off and he says, well, what's going to you? What, do you want to wrestle or something? And I said, mate, I'd, I'd love one. I'd, I'd love one. <laughs> anyway, boys here, boys here on the track. Next thing you know, circle up. We've got the circle around us and it's on. Like we've got... Everyone's chanting, blokes yelling, rip his head off, rip his head off. <laughs> and um, yeah, so anyway, the wrestle, wrestle begins. Just, uh, you know, the, the old Greco-Roman wrestling start. And um, about 10 seconds in, I've got his leg. And when you've got their leg up in the air in a wrestle, there's not much you can do. And I, I've... Uh, I'm playing up to it by this stage. I've got the the old wrestling, like, you know, put the hand up. Giving high fives to all the boys as well. The boys are all just yelling, finish him. (laughs) So, picked him up, tombstone finish. (laughs) And the boys have just erupted. And, um, yeah. And anyway, he he blamed my low centre of gravity. So we went. So we went again. Same thing. Leg up. Tombstone finish. <laughs> Boys carried me off the track. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, like, like, I do laugh about that story, and I tell it a fair bit. And Bubba probably hates it, but um, that that seriously was a big moment for me. Uh, <laughs> I was I was terrified of Bubba probably up until that point, but once I knew I could take him to wrestle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did he pick you the next week, Shaggy? Uh Well, I wasn't picked that week, but um, <laughs> yeah, I just I probably gave him a stink eye a few times after that. Maybe I got picked a bit sooner than I would have otherwise. So, you know. <laughs> that is fantastic. Oh, God. How, do, how do we continue after that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's why. That's why, Cameron. I've been telling you to put him on. Oh, yeah. No, Shannon. We talked pranks recently. Yeah. I believe you were in the middle of many. Can you give me your best one? Oh, uh, look, I wasn't in. I, you don't admit to being the prankster. So <laughs> I, were you the ghost? No, absolutely not. No, yeah. I'll put my hand up and say I was not the ghost. I was not the ghost. That was well done, though. We, like, we're still talking about it now. We don't know who it is. Like, That's pretty impressive. There's a lot of respect for that. Domsey <laughs> thought it was Tom Hawkins, but Hawkey. Uh, Oh, there were, there were photos, and, and the ghost wasn't that big, was he? Like, yeah, he was about 174 centimetres, I reckon. Hey? He was about 174 centimetres. 
Uh, no, I'd touch taller than that, I would have thought. <laughs> Actually, who is taller out of you two? Mm. Good uh, question, Cameron. Stacey's got me. Is it the head, though, that probably gets over the line? <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, nah, I don't know, Scotty. Like, I, I, the, the standard pranks that you see um, at every footy club, I would have thought. The moving of cars, the putty in the lockers, putting the locker in the middle of the pool, that type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, regulation. Any big pranks practice. does it, Melbourne? Anyone renowned for that at the days? Um, uh, Jeremy Howe was, yeah, he was, when, when, I, well, when I was playing, he's obviously at the highs now, but yeah, he was probably ranked one at the days, I would have thought. Yeah. Oh, dear, Shan. Oh, I, I, I don't even want to take this to uh, a, a semi-serious place. I just want to keep just loading you up for more stories. This yeah. is, no, you're a goal. Take it whichever way you want to, Cameron. Is, I'm, I'm, is there <laughs> any chance we can just... Um, uh, drop the dead weight from this podcast, maybe get rid of Stokes and get you in and just uh, on a weekly basis. Oh, we'll have an offline chat if, if you, if you <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey. Wow. Hey, um, hey Burnsy, uh, I know you don't like talking footy, so let's just talk about your, um, your great mate, uh, Stevie J. Obviously, you used to a, a very tight uh, best mates. Yep. One but, of the greatest um, best, men, best men speeches of all time of all, at his wedding of all time. by you. Yeah. Uh, Oh, he's an easy man to take the piss out of. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk about let's tell the supporters and the guys that listen about uh, your the great rivalry of used to playing. Oh, actually doing anything. We we nearly come to Blues in Queenstown over pool, uh, but also talk about maybe the the ping pong challenges, um, you know, golf. Let's talk about a couple of Stevie J stories because we like to give Stevie a bit of a. Um, yeah, so we we basically played each other at anything possible. So. Golf, footy golf, tennis, table tennis, change room, cricket, backyard cricket, basketball, Xbox, PlayStation, whatever. whatever. Ten pin bowling was a big one. Ten pin was massive. Yeah. We, we did get to a point there where we were pretty much averaging 200. We, were, uh, we got that good at it and the lanes were, were booked for us already. Um, <laughs> and we had a ball that we always had to get. Um, we'd wait for it if we had to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> One of the most ridiculous things we used to um, bet on was who ordered the best option off the menu. Uh, so <laughs> we would leave it to the waiter's reaction. So, you, you know, you'd both have an order and one of them, good order. <laughs> nice order. Uh, or if you got no reaction at all, like that was an automatic loss. So, uh, um, so there was, yeah, there were ridiculous things. Like, and I, I guess, um, I don't know, with Stevie, like table tennis was one that we played um, regularly. And um, he used to blame like clothing for his restriction of movement um, every time he lost a set. So there's one time that I had him down to his jocks. Like, he'd take off a piece of clothing every time I'd beat him. And um, yeah, he honestly believed that was the reason he was losing because of restriction of movement. So. <laughs> Uh, he's, he's one of a kind, but um, certainly never a dull moment hanging out with him, that's for sure. Fancy, oh, <laughs> fancy. Pure gold, mate. Can you give us one, just for our listeners, one one footy memory? Your, your happiest memory? Your Is most... that what we're on here for? Yeah, just, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to go there. I don't want to talk footy, but let's go one footy memory. Was it you just uh, absolutely destroying... Um, a certain opponent in the 09 grand final and lighting up the MCG and leading us to a premiership? Or was there one that stands out as something special in that wonderful career you had? Um, uh, yeah, well, I was, I'd say the 09 granny was my, my, my favourite memory. Um, obviously, I'd already played in one in 07, but um, uh, probably still haven't told many people, but in the, at the 08 grand final, when I was going up the lift, I obviously wasn't playing. Um, there was a few Geelong supporters in the in the lift, and um, yeah, they just proceeded to tell me how lucky I was, like the luckiest player, luckiest of all time to play in a premiership. Bro. Like basically, just tell me I didn't deserve it. Um, <laughs> oh, and right, eh? um, that really like stuck with me. That like it was hard. There was no escape when you're in a lift with with blokes like that, and um, and you can't just get, start throwing punches when you're in the Geelong trap. Um, <laughs> so. Um, 
So you needed a hot spud just to throw yeah, it. Yeah, I was looking for a hot spud. Um, <laughs> that would have been handy. Um, but um, I guess that was sort of, it wasn't just those guys. Like I, there was a bit of that sentiment um, because I, yeah, like the, I was in and out of the team all the time and it certainly wasn't one of the guns. So um, those sort of things sit in the back of your mind. Um, but um, yeah, I just remember a real sort of satisfaction after the 09 granny because yeah, I felt like I played a part at least, and um, and certainly I played that whole season, um, and yeah, it's it's a, it was just a, it was a satisfying feeling, I suppose, to feel like I contributed somewhat um, to um, to a special day, and um, and I felt like that that premiership was more for the players, just just the players, than like the 07 was about everything. Forty four years, it was. As big as it got, like it was about the fans. Whereas I, I felt like 09 was a bit tighter um, around the playing group. It was still for the fans, obviously, but um, yeah, we, we enjoyed it much more just as a, as a tight group that year, I felt. Well, you were certainly magnificent in it, Burnsy. And uh, anyone suggesting anything other, and, and I appreciate your, uh, your honesty there, shows a very narrow minded view of football if they think. Uh, your role and everyone's role in a premiership team isn't crucially important. So uh, an incredible career and by what we've seen and heard today, uh, a magnificent career when it comes to um, a lot of fun around the club. And I think that was a big part of what made it such a great place to be. And the success we had was folks like yourself and Stokesy and uh, Dave Johnson and these types of people who even uh, when the joke box came into play in 2007, when it was Henry Playfair and Stephen King and these guys, gee, it made it a fun place to be around. Yeah, uh, it was unbelievable, mate. Like, there's no, no workplace like a footy club. There, there really isn't. Like, just to have so many like-minded people. Um, you, you've all... Like, in Geelong especially, I think that's the, that's the real advantage we have at the Cats is that we live two minutes from each other. Like, whenever... When we leave the club... If you were bored, you text someone, they beat your house. Well, like, yeah, within a couple of minutes. Whereas in Melbourne, a bit more spread out. Um, everything needs to be really organised. Um, we had just we were bro- we were like brothers. We really were, um, and and that's and that um, I suppose that camaraderie and brother- brotherhood has just lasted right through. A- any chance we get to catch up, we take it. Um, we-, we were having premiership reunions three years after our flag. Like it was just. <laughs> <laughs> It's, um, yeah, I'm just really thankful to be a part of it um, and to, to have mates that I do, like, um, yeah, like two of you here and, um, and yeah, a lot of others, really, that I've, I've made out of my time at, at the Cats and just, um, yeah, really thankful for everything that came with it. Talking about celebrations, too, we've got the great man's bucks coming up. Hope, or, I don't know how this is going to work out, but uh, hopefully in the next couple of months to celebrate... Uh, him finally um, popping the question and uh, wow. yeah, the wedding. So um, yeah. hopefully, we'll, the market. hopefully we'll have some uh, stories <laughs> after that to tell you the, the listeners here. Yeah, um, I, I don't like our chances of flying to New Zealand this year, so I, go <laughs> nah, um, <laughs> I don't think so either. It, it was meant to be in Queenstown, so we might have to have a reflective bucks next year of some, some sort, I'm not sure. Um, in good old Shep? Uh, I don't know, don't know Shep, Yahoo Bar or the other. <laughs> Yahoo Bar, yes. Is it still <laughs> open? Lingy dominated that at my 21st. So. <laughs> Yahoo Bar. <laughs> Great place, Scotty. Great place. Yeah. Shep and oh, wow. Yeah. Just, loved a few of the uh, trips back to the hometowns to the boys when they were turning 21. Those they were different times though too, Lingy. Oh, there were no camera phones back then. So. <laughs> 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 oh, thank goodness for that. Bernsey, thank you so much for joining us. We could honestly keep going for hours. We we better finish up. Um, all the best, stay safe and keep doing a great job with what you're doing with those young Melbourne boys doing the player welfare. But you are welcome on this podcast whenever you want. Uh, thanks, Lingy, Scotty, Stoker. Hey, well, great job. Loved it. Thanks, boys. Great to have Shannon Burns on the podcast this week. What a legend he is. Uh, we're going to keep those great guests coming throughout the next few weeks. It's always great to talk to maybe a past player, a current player. So we'll keep trying to get on some wonderful guests for you. I've got a challenge for you two quickly, boys, for next week. Yep. You know, we do all these lists, all these teams, everything like that. 
We're doing an Asian Scott. list. <laughs> <laughs> Our, Filipino list. The great Tommy Peters is thrown out there. I want you to name your best 22 for the Cats to play a game, not just representative of honours and everything like that, to play a game from 1990 to now. In the AFL Ooh. era, the okay. best 22 to play a game of football. Okay. Wow. Can you do that for me for next week? Gotcha. Good. I'll get you two to do it so I don't have to do it and then you I don't have, have to burn anyone. You have to do it, Cameron. You mm -hmm. have to do it. You're the host. It's all in. All right. All right. That's our challenge for next week. We're going to do that. We'll get some great guests on. Thank you so much to all of our listeners, all the questions coming in. Keep them coming. We love talking nonsense, so we love your support, knowing that there are some listeners out there who appreciate our nonsense. Big thanks to Panther Tires again for their support of this podcast. We will be back again next week.